Hello and welcome to Run Testers. My name's Nick and this is our full review of the Adidas Boston 12. So the Boston 12 is a big update for the line, very different to what we've seen from the Boston 10 and 11, which were obviously big changes to what we'd seen in the past from the Boston line. They were big max stack training shoes with lots of tech going on in the midsole. And that's the case with the Boston 12 as well. But in general, Adidas has stripped it right back, improved the feel of the ride, made it a lighter shoe. And, and all around, it's a much better shoe. I'll say that now. It's a little bit of a spoiler for the review. It costs £140 in the UK, $160 in the US. It weighs in at 259 grams or 9.1 ounces in my UK which is a US nine and a half. It has a seven millimeter drop with a stack height of 38 millimeters at the heel and 31 at the forefoot. That's a fair bit lighter than the Boston 10 I tested, which was just under 300 grams and had a slightly higher stack as well. The Boston 10 and 11 had a stack that maxed out at 39 and a half millimeters. So got a slightly lower drop with the Boston 12 and a slightly lower stack. So the big drop in weight is due to changes all over the shoe, but we might as well start with the upper, which has been you know, stripped back considerably. You've got less padding on here, less overlays, uh, just a less built up feel than you had with the Boston 10, which really did have the upper of a training shoe rather than the slightly racier upper you have here on the Boston 12, which you know, it's really very lightweight, minimal toe bumper there, no real padding around the heel apart from these two strips of padding inside, nothing at the Achilles. It's, it's a design by Adidas that doesn't really work for me, but heel locking the shoe has stopped it rubbing my Achilles, luckily. And then a very thin tongue as well. The midsole is still a dual density midsole like the Boston 10 and 11. You've got a layer of Light Strike Pro over a layer of Light Strike, but this is Light Strike 2.0. It's still an EVA foam, but it's a lot softer and lighter than the Light Strike used on the Boston 10 and 11. We also seem to have a deeper chunk of the Light Strike when it comes to the forefoot with the uh, Boston 12. And overall, it certainly has a softer feel underfoot than the uh, past versions of the shoe. Inside the midsole, you'll find Adidas's Energy Rods 2.0. These are glass fiber infused energy rods that, that are lined up with the uh, metatarsals on the foot and generally are designed to deliver the same effect as a carbon plate, adding some extra pop to your toe off in particular. You can see the rods through the bottom of the shoe there a little bit. And then the outsole is Continental Rubber, obviously a very, very good material, one that we've loved for a long time in Adidas shoes. You've got really quite good forefoot coverage, two significant strips of rubber at the back, a bit of exposed foam, but it is this light strike EVA material and it's positioned well, so I wouldn't really be too worried about the exposed foam on the bottom of this shoe, reducing its durability. I've been using the Boston 12 in my usual UK size, which is a UK 9, uh, and it fits me very well. It translates to a US 9.5, so can be a little bit smaller than some other UK 9s, but this is my normal size for Adidas in general. Sometimes I have to go half a size up with their shoes, like the um, Adios Pro 3, owing to the slightly odd uh, upper design it has at the front in particular, but the UK 9 has fit me spot on in the uh, Boston 12. It's not as tight and as cramped as Adidas shoes have tended to be in the Adizero line for a long time in terms of the width. It's still not the widest shoe in the world, but yeah, I think there's a nice amount of room there. I do have quite a narrow fit though, so I'm not always the best judge of whether it's going to be a wide enough shoe for some people. Fit is okay at the heel. I've heel locked it. I don't like the way Adidas does these heels of all of its Adizero line shoes. I've had big heel rub problems with some of them, but Heel locking the Boston 12 means that I've had no concerns with it, even over a longer run. Do have some slight concerns of how thin the tongue is. Like you do get a bit of lace pressure with this shoe. It's a really racy upper for what is a shoe I think that is geared to do quite a lot of different daily training runs. Had some lace pressure on it. It did ease a bit over the course of a long run today. So I'm not, again, not very worried with it, but certainly an upper that delivers a few little pressure points or concern points to look out for. Overall, I was happy in my normal running shoe size, uh, the same size I have for most Adidas shoes, aside from the Pro 3, which I do so I'd go half a size up on. So I really like the Boston 12 on our first run. If you've seen the first run video, that was just a general training run, like a fairly easy pace with a couple of little pickups. In general, I continue to like them for those easy and steady daily training runs. I think they are a nice blend of comfort and speed. The speed's always there under the surface if you want to pick up the pace in them. But yeah, for those general runs, I thought they were pretty good. But I wanted to test out their versatility by looking at how they fare over a proper speed session, which I did in the shoe earlier in the week, and then a long run, which I did today. So the session was hard. I will say that I didn't set myself up for success with this session as I ran out straight after work because the baby happened to be asleep and headed straight down to a bit of road to do what would be a track session, but the tracks are busy at the moment and it was a bit blowy. So I was doing two sets of 2K at 330 for K pace and then five times 400 meters uh, in 75 seconds with a 100 meter jog recovery, which is 100 meter stagger recovery, slow walk recovery as it turned out to be. The shoe felt really good. I didn't feel very good, but the shoe felt really good. So on those 2K reps, that's around marathon pace in theory 330 per k pace for me i'm not in that kind of shape right now but that's the pace we're looking at there and it did feel like quite cruisy and controlled in the shoe it didn't feel like overly aggressive for that kind of rep which is what you want you want a bit of comfort there because it is a pace you know i'd hope to hold for a long time and 
pushing through the 2K did feel nice and controlled in it. You get a little bit of um, bounce off the front of the shoe, but the heel as a heel striker is nice and comfortable for that kind of rep. And it did feel really light and aggressive on those 400s. Like I was really struggling with those, got through all of them on pace, but was just, it was a real struggle and going at it hard, especially when you're trying to judge a 400 meter rep on the road where you know, you're obviously gonna go out too fast because you haven't got the markings of a track to judge it properly. But it did feel a lot lighter than it actually is. Like it's not the lightest shoe in the world, but it felt really lightweight. It didn't feel a lot different actually to the Adios 8 in terms of lightness and punch and that general racy feel from the shoe. So yeah, I really enjoyed it for that speed session. I do think it's got that top end speed, no problem. And that's becoming, I think, slightly rarer these days with these super trainers. We'll talk more in the verdict, but a lot of them are coming out geared more for just general daily cruising. But I want a super trainer with you know, fancy foams and fancy tech in themselves to be able to go and smash out track sessions in it, you know, in the same way I would a carbon shoe. And this does do that. Like you do lose a bit of the punch of a full carbon shoe, which are obviously lighter as well. And they have complete midsoles made of just super foams, things like the Adios Pro 3. But this felt great for that speed session. I'd have no concerns about going to use it for speed sessions in general. Concerns that did arise actually was almost that it almost felt too racy to me. Like the upper changes the feel of the shoe compared to the previous Boston's you know, dramatically. Like it's almost the biggest difference between them, even though the midsole setup has changed as well. It's just such a racy upper, in my opinion. Like uh, it feels you know, really thin, holds the foot tightly but then without much cushioning really throughout the tongue like i said in the fit section is quite thin so you get a bit of that pressure from the laces that is something i associate more with racing shoes like the vaporfly than training shoes and that did make me quite concerned about doing my long run in the shoe like i thought yeah with Boston 10, the one thing I'd say about it, it was a great long run shoe. It was very comfortable. The upper almost hugged the foot. There's lots of foam under foot, but it felt nice and stable. You can go and cruise around on it, no problem. And I was a bit apprehensive, actually, before going out for my long run this morning in the Boston 12. I just did 90 minutes, just around uh, just over a half marathon distance. And I needn't have been uh, that worried. Like, it really felt amazing. Like, underfoot, it feels fantastic. It's got that perfect blend of um, comfort and then pop off the, off the forefoot there. So... Most of the run I was just gliding along, like there was a lot of sections into the wind and away from the wind, but pace was nice and controlled, heart rate was low, ticking over a little bit faster than you might necessarily expect for the effort involved, which is what I would expect now from shoes with carbon technology or glass fibre infused technology in the midsole. Just felt really comfortable as well, like the change at the heel is really noticeable, it's so much less blocky and um, dense than the Boston 10, like I found that a comfortable shoe, but the heel was firm. And I didn't find it that unpleasant, but it wasn't as pleasant as the Adidas Boston 12 with this uh, new light strike foam at the heel, just a lot more comfortable. And it just means that the difference between the two foams is less stark. So you get a much smoother transition, I think, uh, onto that bigger wedge of light strike pro in the fourth. It really almost eases you into that. And then you get a bit of rebound off, noticeably so when you start picking up the pace. And the upper kind of loosened up actually over the course of the run. Like at the start of the run, I thought, ah, oh, there's a bit of pressure on the top of my shoe. I'm gonna, maybe I have to loosen my laces, but actually I didn't. And the whole thing just relaxed a little and it felt fine for that run. Like, still have some slight concerns about the upper around the heel. I wish I had to just sort out the heel because the upper, I think, is one area that is holding them back a little bit compared to um, some other shoes. It seems like an easy thing to fix. But again, probably lots of people don't have these problems with the uppers. And it was fine today in the end on the long run. I really enjoyed the shoe all round and it's just a big tick in that box now. That's great because I did wonder if that was one area it was going to lose compared to the Boston 10 and it doesn't. If anything, it's still an improvement on the Boston 10 uh, for long runs because the 10 would just start to feel a bit heavy on long runs, I found. Like I did a really enjoyable 20 miler when I was testing the Boston 10, but it was also a very wet day and the upper on it soaked up a lot of water and in general the shoe felt quite big and clumpy by the end, which just doesn't really happen with the Boston 12. I was still really enjoying picking my feet up. could easily pick up the pace anytime I wanted to in the shoe and you get a nice bit of response. But if you do just want to rock back and cruise, it does that really well as well. And then today I also did a long stretch on a kind of gravelly canal towpath and just no impact at all on the outside there. You've got the grip and I just have no real worries about this outsole roughing up. Adidas, in general, on the, under, on the midsole side of things, get a big tick for durability with their more uh, super shoes in general, the super trainers and the super shoes, like Light Strike Pro holds up well. The yeah, layer of Light Strike EVA is gonna, seems like it's gonna hold up really well on the shoe as it did on the Boston 10. So all in all, a fantastic run test. Like everything I've thrown at the shoe, it's done really well, really enjoyably. The only concerns I have actually are with the upper, which I don't love, but at the same time, it's not been a massive problem on any of my runs. So yeah, very enjoyable run test. 
So I think the Adidas Boston 12 is an absolutely great shoe and it's one of the most successful new entrants into this super trainer category, which has grown more varied and strange in the past couple of months, in my opinion. A lot more of these shoes are coming in and they're being geared towards easy runs more than anything else, in my opinion. And I think that's strange for shoes that are really expensive with lots of fancy tech in the midsole. For me, I want my super trainer to be great for fast stuff. All the all round performance is a real bonus. Like, uh, you know, it's great that you can cruise around these days in the shoes, but it's got to have that top end speed and the Boston 12 has it. And actually not that many of these new super trainers have it in my opinion so i do think this is a great training partner shoe to uh, things like the adios pro 3 or other carbon plated shoes really versatile can use it for lots of runs you can use it as an all-rounder because i do think it will have the chops for racing especially over longer distances or you can slip it in a rotation alongside a faster shoe or in the middle of a rotation as your general daily trainer and speed work shoe with a racing shoe and then something that's a bit more cushioned and a bit less you know fancy with rods and such in the midsole for just pure easy day cruising i think it works across all those levels which is what i want from a super trainer but like i said in the run test the only concerns i have about it are the comfort of the upper for that general daily training and easy long runs like it's been okay for me but i still have those worries and i think some people might struggle with it a little bit because it is quite an aggressive upper over the t over the tongue there and then the slightly dodgy heel design but if you don't have those concerns the underfoot section of the shoe is certainly brilliant the midsole is really well balanced for a range of runs and the outsole is great for uh durability grip everything really so right now like i said i think it's up there with the best in this category of these super shoes and we're going to do some comparisons we'll do a load of comparison videos as well because those are always really popular but i am going to run through as many comparisons as i can right now so if you just watch the review hopefully you'll know how it compares to the shoe you're particularly interested in start with the endorphin speed 3 the king of this category the best super trainer going for a long time and the boston 12 i think is one of the best contenders to it probably maybe my biggest contender to it of the latest batch of them because it is so well rounded it really can do everything really well endorphin speed 3 has a smoother ride with the rocker on it it's a bit softer and better for easy day cruising i'd say and the upper is certainly a lot more accommodating for that more relaxed running it's a more comfortable upper even if i had some concerns with the fit of the speed 3 as well as i have a narrow foot but in terms of the underfoot ride for a range of paces i think it is pretty close between the two shoes. Like I say, you've got the slightly more traditional snappy ride with the Boston um, 12, but I like that. I think when I go down and do something like 400s, I think I probably slightly prefer the feel of this shoe. Maybe if you're looking at sustained paces, like holding a hard pace over an hour, the Speed 3 is just so good at that. Really delivers pace in a very controlled and comfortable manner. But yeah, overall, I think a really strong contender if you didn't get on with the fit of the Speed 3 or in particular, don't really get on with the grip of the shoe. They definitely get better grip with the Boston 12. I think this is probably the best alternative. Speed 3 probably slightly edges the versatility states because it is so good at those easy runs. But yeah, it's very close between them. Puma Deviate Nitro 2, I think is one of the other better shoes in this category. I think actually it's quite similar again between the two shoes. The Puma does have the slightly better outsole, but actually they're both great outsoles. It's not really a differentiating factor. Boston 12 is a bit lighter. I think it has a bit more pace than the Puma Deviate Nitro 2, especially when it comes to speed sessions with shorter intervals. Deviate Nitro 2, again, has a slightly better upper, I think a more accommodating upper for um, easy, relaxed runs, but I probably prefer the Boston 12 to the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. Didn't say which I prefer out of the Speed 3 and the Boston, did I? Um, probably still just like preferred the Endorphin Speed 3 on performance. It's very hard to beat the Endorphin Speed 3. Anyway, uh, Magic Speed 3 just come out. Uh, I've only done one run of it so far, but I think it's a really interesting new super trainer in that it's geared very much towards that racy end of things. It's the lightest super trainer I've come across. It's got the most racy feel all round. It feels much more like a cheaper alternative to a carbon shoe than a shoe that's geared to be an all rounder. So I do think the Boston 12 is a better shoe for doing long runs, easy runs, just general daily training, uh, that kind of thing. I think the Magic Speed 3 has got the edge on pace, but uh, I think it is a less versatile shoe. It's a shoe I think you'd have to build a rotation around, whereas I do think the Boston 12 is a shoe you can really use as an all-rounder. Right, Hokamak X is next. Uh, that's a bigger shoe. It's That's one of these new shoes that I think is, is at its best for daily training, or easy days, steady cruising. I've done a little bit of faster stuff in the shoe, but haven't loved it. The Boston 12, I think, has a the bigger range as a result. So I think it's a lot better at that top-end stuff while still being pretty good for the easy day stuff. Mac X is a slightly more stable shoe. It's a slightly better shoe for easy runs, but I prefer the Boston 12 in the super trainer category because I want it to be able to do those fast runs and I think the Boston 12 does a better job of them. The really big lads, uh, things like the Kinvara Pro from Saucony, even the Nike Zoom Fly, same again. I think those shoes are just not really built for me. They're geared for very easy runs as far as I can tell. They're quite nice for cruising easy paces, but they don't really have much versatility for me. Boston 12 is a much better super trainer, in my opinion, than anything else I haven't mentioned. The other one is the Asics Super Blast, which is a really interesting shoe. She have only done one run in and I really like, and 
I think I might end up really loving, but uh, it's not got a plate in the midsole or anything like that. So it's just got Asics' best foam. It's an interesting shoe that uh, we'll have more to talk about, but I think the Boston 12 is probably the more approachable shoe. It's the shoe that's a lot cheaper, got a more normal stack height, has got the rods in there for the extra punch. So I probably Boston 12 probably represents better value, but I'll do some more testing of the Super Blast before I deliver any verdicts on that shoe. And then if you're comparing it to the Adios Adios 8, which I tested recently, I really loved the Adios 8. I think it was a great kind of racing flat with a bit of a super shoe feel to it, a bit more punch and a bit more comfort than previous versions of the shoe. But I do think the Boston 12 almost removes a need for the Adios 8. Unless you're someone who really craves that low to the ground feel with the Adios 8, that racing flat feel, I would be getting the Boston 12 for sure. I think it's just a better shoe. I prefer using it for speed sessions even. Uh, the Adios 8 felt you know, amazing, really fast and lightweight, but the Boston 12 does as well, and it protects your legs a lot better, and it is a much more versatile shoe. So Adios 8 is a good shoe, but I do think the Boston 12 covers off the bases it does and then adds a whole lot more in terms of versatility. Top of my head, I haven't got any more comparisons to do, but if I think of some more, I will. And like I say, we'll have some more detailed comparison videos to come. But overall, slotting the shoe in, it's right near the top of the uh, Super Trainer category. Dolphin Speed 3 might still have the edge, but then this is a different feel to it, a feel that some people might prefer. And if they just maybe tweak the upper a little bit with the next version to make it slightly um, more comfortable, you don't have to add a lot of weight. I will say that, you know, they'll obviously strip this back to reduce weight, but something like the Asics Magic Speed 3 has a little bit more padding around the heel, a slightly better designed upper all round. It's more comfortable, and that's a very lightweight shoe. So I think Adidas can certainly improve the upper on this without you know, making big trade-offs by adding a load of weight. I think that would take it up a level, again, as an all-rounder. But in terms of everything that's going on beneath the foot of the shoe, it's excellent. Adidas knocks it out the park. That's my review of the Adidas Boston 12. I feel like I talked really quickly in that one. Uh, I know people get annoyed by that. I'm sorry about that, but I'm excited and I've got limited time to film this. Maybe reduce the speed. I will try and slow down in future videos. I apologize, uh, but yeah, excited. Good shoe. Please like, subscribe, ring the little bell and we'll see you next time.